Welcome to the stat room. Ladies and gentlemen, week one is in the books. We're on to week two, guys. I had a great week one. But before I get into all of that, guys, let me introduce myself. Guys, I am Vaughn the Stat Man. You can follow me on Twitter at Vaughn the Stat Man. And guys, check out the website, VaughnTheStatMan.com. If you watch me for the first time, guys, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my future videos. And also, guys, if you've been watching me since 2017, hit the subscribe button anyways, because this is a new channel. So, you know, I don't like to waste a lot of you, you guys' time. So let's get right into it. All right. So the cap week one, guys, both of my main slate lineups, they cashed. Both of my 1 p.m. lineups cashed. My 4 p.m. lineup did not cash. But remember what I told you guys. If you cash on the main slate and you cash on the 1 p.m. slate, don't play the rest of the slates. I look at FanDuel and DraftKings like the stock market. If I already won, then my stocks is booming. I don't need to play every contest. I'm trying to have money by the end of the season, so I don't play every contest. But it's your guys. You guys, it's your money. You can do what you want. But my advice is to pick a few contest and play them because if you didn't do well in the main slate and you didn't do well in the 1 p.m slate why take a chance on a 4 p.m slate have you ever heard that saying never make a decision when you're lost hungry tired or scared so if you're desperate bad things happen in desperation so if you've already lost chalk it up week one your stocks was down but the stat room stats was up and also guys for the stat room the top players list will go out on thursday the top players list went crazy all right, guys, so as you can see on the board, guys, these are the top players from week one. Mahomes, he had 33. Murray had 34.4. Mixon had 23. Hawkinson had 21.7. Hill had 31.6. Arizona defense had 16 points. And let's go over a couple of the wide receivers who had two touchdowns. Hopkins had two. Lockett, who I had in the video last week, who I told you was going to ball out, had two touchdowns. He was in every single one of my lineups. And Samuels had two touchdowns touchdowns all right guys so before i get into the four players that i will give you for my top players list i mean for my four horsemen slash four studs let me get into the games i like first up i like murray home against minnesota now week one guys week one is nothing more than week one so don't overreact on week one green bay looked bad minnesota looked bad all that was was guys are not used to the preseason. There was no preseason games last year, but there was preseason games this year. So teams didn't want to get their guys injured. So that's why it was just bad football week one. You saw a lot of penalties, false starts, and all those kind of things. You'll see a much better brand of football in week two. So let's get right back to where we were. I like Murray at home against Minnesota. Murray was a top fantasy quarterback and Minnesota they're going to struggle against the pass, and Murray is mobile as well. It could be a, another big week for Murray. Wilson, who was in the video last week, balled out him and Lockett. We're both in the video. Like Wilson against Tennessee, we'll have a lot of exposure there. Brady is going up against one of the worst defenses in NFL history. This Tampa Bay team is just bad, and I don't understand what the GM was thinking. Like, yeah, we're, we're a real bad team. Coach, this is what we're going to do to get better. Let's get rid of our best player. Let's get rid of Julio Jones and watch how we get better. You saw how it looked week one. They're going to probably look like that all season long. Don't like Allen in Minnesota. I mean, don't like Allen at Miami. Dak Prescott, I'm kind of on the fence because the Chargers is going to be a, a stiffer competition than Tampa Bay was. I love Hurts at home. Winston, I like him at Carolina, but I'm giving you guys Herbert. Herbert is going up against Dallas. And what I saw from Dallas, they got a second year cornerback who was trying to step into his own. But he's far from a shutdown cornerback. Now you got to go up against Allens and Williams. So you go from that explosive Tampa Bay wide receiving core to now you got to go face the three-headed monster with the Chargers. Herbert has a cannon for an arm. I would say Herbert is going to probably throw four touchdowns. He might even sneak and rush for one. But I think he's going to have a big week, guys. At the running back position, guys, McCaffrey, if you notice, his price tag went from 10.5 to 10,000. He didn't get into the end zone last week. Um, remember, I told you, I, I, kinda, I don't really like to go with these $10,000 players. Cook was in a prime matchup last week against Cincinnati. They did well. Don't think Cincinnati is going to do well every week, but they did do well week one. Cook was off, but he'll bounce back. Not against Arizona. I would say the following week. Kamara against Carolina. I do like Kamara against Carolina. I think 
he's in position to do to do well this week. Chubb is probably the best running back I've seen so far on this list against Houston. I believe he's going to ball out. He had two touchdowns last week. Henry against Seattle. I don't like him again this week. Mixon at Chicago. I like Mixon. I think Mixon's going to have a breakout year. Not feeling Elliott. I think Elliott, this will probably be one of his last years. But the running back I'm giving you guys is Montgomery. He had 16 carries for 108 yards against a Rams defense that last year no one could run on this team. Montgomery is going to be one of the top wide, top running backs this year in fantasy. A lot of people are not even considering this guy, but I watched him last year. You got Dalton at quarterback. The way you settle Dalton down is you run the ball and you do play action. They're going to run the ball and do play action. Montgomery will probably have another 16 to 18 carries. Now, at the wide receiver position, guys, I'm not going through all the wide receivers. That will be for my top players list. I'm going to just go right and give you the guy that I'm going to give you on the, on the list on this video. And the player I'm going to give you is Allen. I love Allen in this matchup, guys. Like I told you last week about Lockett. Allen is in a prime matchup this week. He already, if you look at his targets, he always gets 10 targets. He had 13 targets. He'll get 13 again this week. Only this week, I say he gets into the end zone with nine or 10 catches. He gets all catchable balls, guys. He gets balls within 15 yards, typically. So I think he'll go for 100 yards. I'm going to say he get two TDs this week. All right, guys. So now at the tight end position, guys, you have a bunch of great options. Don't like Waller at Pittsburgh. Um, Gronk had two TDs. Godard had a TD. I'm giving you Noah Font. I love Font on the road, guys. I'm so sorry that, that, that Judy had the injury. He was carted off the field. Um, I don't like to see any player get hurt. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be crying and whining because he was in your fantasy. Sometimes it's not about fantasy, guys. If he get hurt, so what? You know, that, that, that's, that's, that's the gamble you take. These guys are still human, so look at it from that standpoint as well. But Font had eight targets last week. Without Judy in the lineup, he will get 10 to 12 targets, and I say he gets into the end zone, guys. So that's it, guys. You got Font, Allen, Montgomery, and Herbert. And for those of you who want to join the stat room, guys, I'm doing a special for my monthly special, and I'm also going to do a season special, guys. Check the comments section. And also, guys, we made it this far. You know what to do. So good hunting week two. My word for today is still. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're going through a rough time, sometimes you need to tune everything out. All the noise, all your friends, all your family, and just be still. Don't call nobody. Don't tell nobody what's going on. Just be still for a day or two. You'll be amazed that when you're still, things can work out in your favor and you don't even know it. But when you tell everybody what's going on with you, you ever heard that saying, hurt people hurt people? Sometimes the people you're talking to are hurt. So guys, when you're going through a trying time, before you go and post it on social media and all of that stuff, guys, just be still and see what tomorrow brings. Love you guys. All right, guys, so thanks for watching the video, guys. If you made it this far, please hit that like button and please subscribe and welcome to the Stab Room. Love you guys.